if you're an engineer, uh, IT, whatever you have, and you have something to represent it to the committee, you have to learn how to talk. So I divided it into two lectures. Third time, this, today we are going to talk about the important, the art. The art. Well, can you move this way so I can see your face? The art of speaking. Just for you to know how important that subject is, anybody knows of a university teach that? Almost every university teach public speaking. But did you know that the University of Pennsylvania here have four stories, just the college, for public speaking? And did you know that every president takes six month course in there? So they learn how to speak. So the subject is very important. Okay? So we are in Philadelphia, so the college is here. And you are going to end up to be one president one day, or a senator. And I have to tell you, it is so important for you to be able to talk and reach somebody's heart. And I have two examples here. Regardless if they said the truth or not, but it depends on the perception of it. So, the art of speaking, how to speak to the other. Number one, the science, the knowledge. Don't, you know what? I want you to take a note. Usually I give you the option, but today I'm demanding to write a note because it's really important. And you will not remember. So get a piece of paper and start to know right now. So we start with the art of speaking. And one day, you will thank me. One day you will thank me. You say, I really appreciate that they have told us that. So number one, you need to talk about subject you know about. Don't talk about something you don't know about. And when I represent something to you, I don't know everything. I go listen to lecture. I listen in Arabic. I listen in English. I listen to the top, to the bottom, all the options. I summarize it all. I put it all together, and I bring it to you. And you would be surprised if I tell you, for the half hour I talk to you, taking about three to four hours to prepare this half hour thing. Three, four hours. The only time I did not spend any time when we were talking about the lab, because I did 10 years of my life, of my life to work in the lab, so that I memorized that. Number two, preparation. They asked the teacher, how can I do a good speech? He said, preparation. There are three laws to it. Preparation, preparation, preparation. If you prepare it right, it will come right. And then you can convince the other. Why you make a speech in the first place? Why you make speech? And I'll tell you in a minute. For three reasons. Either to give information, or to convince or something, so you have to have that ability to do that, right? You have to know who is your audience. Are they men? Are they women? Are they small children? I talk to you different when I talk to them downstairs. You with me? And I talk to you like we have two courses for the new Muslims downstairs. There is a lady teach ladies, and there is I teach the men. Because think uh, women need different from things men need. You with me? So your orient is very important to know. One time I uh, 
somebody official, he said, well, I am going to give a lecture today to the ADL. Anybody knows what ADL is? Anti-Defamation League. It's the Jewish organization to defend the Jewish, and then we work together. It's like care for the Muslims. He said, really? OK, because I'm going to be there. He said, you're going to be there? You're not Jewish? I said, I know. But I, he did not realize I'm in every organization. And he changed his, he said, it's not only me, there are other people who to be. He changed his speech. So you change your speech to your audience. So you have to see who's your audience. Three, you have linguistic skill. You have to have enough language so you can speak. If I said, I'm trying to give you an example about the language. Sometime I was talking to a, this young lady, she was so uneducated. And I said, that, you know, the tissue is like the blood is a tissue. He said, excuse me? He said, the blood is a tissue. He said, well, the only tissue I know is the toilet tissue. So you have to learn who is your orient and also speak with the language they can understand. So you have to be, you master the language you're going to make the speech with. And I remember also the side of that example, the Chinese teacher. I took a course one time in the summer called Analytical Chemistry. I don't know if you go to chemistry or go to pharmacy, you have to do, take that course. It is five credit hours every single day. And the lab every single day, it's drive you crazy. And the teacher was a Chinese. He was genius. He was genius. He speak English. He knows vocabulary I don't even know. But his accent is like my accent. He had to cut it with knife. We cannot understand him. We complain about him. They told us, you know, the guy is almost a Nobel guy. Uh, have Nobel Prize. But he cannot. So it's very important your language has to be clear. Number four, you have the objective, your goal has to be clear. You are not speaking because you want to speak. You want to speak because you want to get a message through, right? Not you just hear you speak. When I said, you guys take turn in the morning, when after the vicar, make a word. The, the word you're going to make, you're going to give him a message to the kids, to your friend. We're talking to talk about honesty today. So you have a message to give. So your goal has to be clear. Number five, you have to have self-confidence. With not, you think too much of yourself. People can smell that if you are arrogant, if you show up. You have to have self confidence You have to speak. You know the subject because you prepare. You prepare very well. You are giving the speech. You have to have enough self confidence But you don't brag. Number six, you have to be honest. Because also the, or the, the people who are listening to you, the audience, is going to recognize you. And I will give you two presidents. Only Allah knows what in their heart. I cannot judge what in their heart or their mind, but I can tell you they can speak, and that's why they win. Obama won of them. Obama was speaking from his heart. He really, he had the charisma, yes, but he speak. I one more time. I don't know what's in his heart or his mind, but he was speaking honestly. Anybody can tell me who's the second one? Trump. Trump. Thank you. Trump. Even sometimes he said things he shouldn't. But he said it. And that's why the people follow him. People want an honest.
And I, I did say about your people who hear you to be sensitive to them, you have to be a good listener. How are you going to be a good listener? You are the one who speaks. When you speak, even to your class, when I talk to you, I see the gentleman here half asleep, so I go and say, how are you doing? You know, I try to wake him up. I see his head on the floor, it's like he is not looking at me. I, I get his attention, that look at me. I, your eyes has to speak, your fingers has, your hand has to speak. You speak all together, because the eye gives you sign. The, the smile, you don't have to be grouchy, absolutely, even the subject is serious, you don't have to be grouchy. You can't be smiling, that's okay. But, you see what I'm trying to say? So, so that's a good listener, you have to be a good listener. You watch and see. If somebody asks you a question, do not answer if you don't understand the question. Like he asked me this question. I didn't understand. Ask me one more time. I can go to four times. There's nothing wrong with that. But if I could not get that straight, I will meet you after class. That's okay? So after class, we will talk. Explain to me what you need. Make sense to you? You can do it up to four times. I'm not real. I'm just okay? Did you learn something so far? Now. Divide the subject into three or five parts. And now we are going to divide the subject. That's, I choose this model for the speech. There are so many models. But I told you, when I prepare it for you, I study so many models, and I choose the one that will fit our community here, our thinking, our students, etc. Number one, planning. You tell me you want a credit card. So I go back and I plan my speech. What I'm going to talk about? Production, subject, conclusion, credit card, interest. I plan. Planning first step. Number two, preparation. Do you remember preparation? In everything. Preparation, preparation, preparation. Please. Number three. Pattern. You know what pattern is? The smooth of the subject. You move from one item to second item. Like when I said planning. What after planning? Preparation. What after planning? Preparation. After preparation, you make, you make it smooth transaction. And then the presentation. That's the most important. And then after you do the presentation, if you do that like you are a friend, you remember when we talk about leadership and I said, I want everybody here, 11, 12 grade together, share with each other your email, your phone number, not to tease each other, not to bully each other. Keep the network, even when you graduate, when you go to college, stay together. Because if you end up to be a CEO of somebody, and when you are a CEO of some, you can work together. Oh, I know, I know 10 people. You know what I mean? I know 10 people. That would start your business, your company, whatever. When you finish your lecture, you have to ask a close friend of you, evaluate me. Tell me what you think. That's okay. Tell me what do you think about my, my presentation, about my lecture, how did I do? Take the criticism, okay? Why I told him to sit in front of me? Somebody watched my lecture, one of my students, not here, somewhere else. He said, I love it, but it, it, you are inside me, I can't see you, they have to make it face you. I said, okay, I'll tell him. You with me so far? No. If we go back, what did we say? Planning, we go back to planning now. We put planning one, two, three, four. Now we start planning. 
Did you notice every time when I come in here, I'm ahead of time? You always come to your place, you're going to do your representation before time. For anybody else. Look at the place. See how it's set. If I am going to make a project together, I will set you behind each other because at one point I said, you turn this way and you are facing each other and they are ready. If we want to talk, sharing things, then make a circle. Okay, I told you, I told you the Imam is going to make the Salah at 3.20 uh, until the time will change. So you have enough time when you live at 3.15, you get enough time to make wudu and go down there to do the okay? So, you come before anybody else, and I prefer to visit the place. You see the layout, you like it, you don't like it, and if ahead of time, because it depends how big the place or how small, because you are going to use probably computer, maybe you're going to use slides. With that said, you have to determine how big it is, how small it is, so you need to know the place. And also, you are going to be dying, and for your religion, that's, that's part of, of what you need to be. You don't know. I mean, uh, you know Brother Muhammad will come talk to you. He, he's an engineer. He worked for the city of Philadelphia. He's a big shop in the city of Philadelphia. This guy got over $90,000 a year. But he, subhanAllah, and when he was a teenager, he wasn't that great, to be honest with you. He was a teenager, he drove his mother crazy. But subhanAllah, he's dying. So you don't know. You know, he was uh, before an Aqsa. He used to be, I, in my house, I built in my basement, little school, for a classroom, for my friend to bring their kids to teach them. And who was uh, making money for us in Ramadan? Because we had no mosque at that time. I'm talking about so for 35 years. He was vascular. He was the head of the Nafsa when we started here. He was the president of the Nafsa when we started. Dr. Safi. He is vascular surgeon. He memorized the Quran. And he was leading us in, uh, in Taraway. So you don't know. You could be a doctor, you could be an engineer, and die at the same time. You too. You don't think you're going to be that. Why not? So. Now, we said there is goal for that speech, any speech. One of them is general. Or you have to be specific. Or is undertone. Number one, you want to get message to the public. That's an information. The second one, what you want. I'm giving you the option. What do you want? Oh, we want to talk about credit card. Okay, that's what we talk about. If you don't choose, I choose. Sometime, I make a comment. You are here, 20 people. I make a comment, I really did not mean you or you, but I meant him. But I don't want to say him. I said, somebody in this class, for example, really pay attention, and I really appreciate it. You never did, but he did, for example. See what I'm saying? So with your speech, you can relay messages. We said, there are kind of speeches. There are three kinds. First, giving information. We talk about science, we talk about English, we talk about whatever. You have to love the subject you're talking about, and you have to know the subject you want to talk about. Two, speech to convince. Like what? I am, have an orient, I want to convince him, I want to make a class for girls, class for boys, and I want to show why I want that, because it's improved the quality of attention in the classroom, because they don't strike each other, and I have one floor for the girls, one floor for the boys. 
Or I want to convince you, cigarette is bad. It's not only haram, it is bad. And I have to give you proof. I have to show you. I have, so that's the second kind. So the first kind, give you information. Second kind, to convince you. Third kind, I have a problem. I want to solve it. What could be the problem? Could be anything. You are in a company and take my advice and don't ever, ever forget this advice. Don't ever go to your boss and tell him I have this problem if you don't have the solution yet. I come to you, you are my boss. I say, well, we have this. All these people come late or you cannot control them. And the boss is going to Boss doesn't like to be a problem. And he's going to look at you. I have a little problem. I don't know if you like it. I have a little solution. What? what? There is a new clock. This one the employee come with his thumb and record him and his time he can eat. He He is pleased with you. Because whenever you give the problem, and I was boss for so many years, I don't like it when my employee tell me I have a problem. What do you need to do about it? Solve your own problem. If you bring me the solution with it, I really appreciate it. You got it? So if we have a problem, when you represent it, present the problem and show your solution. And with so much being humble. I have a problem, I have a solution. No. I have a solution. It might work. I don't know if you would like it, but I will represent it. When you are humble, people like to help you. When you are arrogant, nobody will help you. Did you ever remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Wazadahum Buddha? Do you remember Surah Al Kaf when you read it every Friday? If you do? What do you mean with that on Buddha? These kids, the young, they are believers. They are away from their castle. They went to the cave because they want to worship Allah. They are already, they have Buddha. Was it now on Buddha? What do you mean by that? The Lord Sheikh Hamdan gives us a very good example. You are driving in town and you lost and you stop with the policeman. He said, Where is so and so? Oh, it's three more blocks to your right. Oh, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. I, thank you very much. Do you know that thank you and I really appreciate it make him feel warm? You know what? When you go three block, you will see a barber shop to your left is not there. So be careful. It will be a little bit behind that. So what did he do? He gave you more information to help you to get there. Why? Why? Because you... You make him feel you appreciate what he did for you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he guides you. You are in Islamic school. You are a good boy. But subhanallah, you come here and sometimes I go in the morning and I see somebody pray duha. When Allah see you do that, you know what? I'm going to give more buddha for you. You, you, you go to a higher stage of belief and that gives you such content in your heart, such peace in your heart. You with me? You with me? Yeah. All right. So you're going to talk after class. Okay. The last one, the occasion speech. Occasion speech at any time should not exceed the 20 minutes. And occasion like what? Graduation. At last the graduation, I don't know if any of you was last year, you make reservation in the park and they came for the graduation. After I make my speech, I forgot to represent the keynote, the keynote speech. And the uh, guy was, I think he was one of your friends. Yeah, yeah Brian. Oh, I said, I'm sorry, I forgot half the speech. So the occasion shall not exceed 20 minutes. Uh, you see those president candidates, Congress candidate, uh, House representative. Talk about that person. You don't talk about anything else. 
you are talking today, I'm talking about the graduation. I'm talking about how many of the 11 of you graduating in this nine. year? How many? Nine. Nine. I will talk about this nine kids. I will not talk about 11. I will not talk about anything else. They are my focus. They are the nine my focus. Each one is going to be represented, which college she's going to, how many scholarships she got, and, all, and I'm so proud of them. So you have any slides on that. When you do talk about uh, convincing them that you have to have self-confidence, you really have, you have to have your argument. Otherwise, and you cannot lose your argument uh, in, in the speech, because if you get that a chance to talk about it, say, I'm, I'm convince you about cigarette is bad. I really have to bring it in such a force. You really, you know what, I'm going to quit you know, if you smoke. You have to leave here, I'm going to quit. He, 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 really, he, he really hit it on me. There is another... Okay, give me two more seconds. And we will be talking about this next week. Have you ever seen Democrat or Republican, regardless, let's say Democrat took over, Biden took over. And they were Republican at the time of Trump, they were working on economy, building this, bringing company back from China and all that. And when Biden took off, they kind of do that. It was done before. Actually, as a result of before. You see what I'm trying to say? Somebody else did the work. You just get the result. They're not with you. No, I understand. So you're saying so, Trump did the work and Biden got the result? Yes. He's like, say this committee. I mean, we were working this committee to, to renovate bathrooms cost us $130,000. It allocated like two years ago. The committee before two years ago, they worked hard to get the money, to get the plan, to get the license and all that. And then I said, you know, I did bathroom for you this, this year. I didn't. It was done two years ago, but now it was implemented. Sometimes they manipulate that in a speech. Did you learn something today? Yes. So next week we will talk about it. There is statistic. 71% of the population, they fear to speak to somebody else. And I'm going to talk about this remedy next week.